Good morning, good morning. Whoops, sorry. Um, yes, welcome back to hang out at Do with Her World. And um, I just I'm stumped for words because it is our last episode for the year. Um, and I just want to say thank you all for joining us or tuning in when you do. And thank you to Dome, um, Dome Cafe for being so supportive over 12 months, 12 months with us, with, ha with Hangout. So thank you so much. Uh, today I have two very beautiful guests, very beautiful, talented, multi-talented, some more multi-faceted, multi, I don't know, very multi-multi. Um, I have on my right, <laughs> multi-green, <laughs> I have on my right Nini Marini or Marini Ramlan. I call her Nini. So Nini is an artist and a maker. We're going to make Nini explain what maker means in a bit. And on my left, I have Chelsea Ng, actor, singer, songwriter. She forgot her ukulele, right? Yeah, ukulele. ukulele. Yeah. So we might play the tune um, later on for you to listen on our on our Facebook page, so you can have a listen. It's a special song she did for Malaysia. And today's topic, we are talking about celebrating Malaysia. So happy birthday, Malaysia! You are turning 62. Wow. Actually, her world follows close behind. Her world turns 60 next year. Wow. So it's going to be our 60th anniversary for her world next year. So yeah. So anyway, let's get started. I want to talk about celebrating Malaysia, about Merdeka. Um, first things first, uh, maybe Nini, you want to explain what maker stands for? <laughs> I know. <laughs> because she was trying to explain to me just now. I was like, ah, never mind. I think I ex let her explain. Okay, just like because Ina knows me from uh, my media background yes. as well. Um, so I used to work in media uh, for like 20 years, and recently I decided to move and concentrate more on my art. So I call myself a maker because on this, on this, at the same time, I still make things. And this is, I can make my own fashion or I can make my own content as in video or, or television content. So it's that's why I can define it that way. Maker. And Chelsea, are you going to tell me what's the song about? Because oh. you said you had a song about Malaysia and you were a bit disappointed that you didn't bring your ukulele for us. So I should, yeah. have, I should, have, I should have thought that because I always have it in my car. But today, I thought I'd be parking outdoors, so I didn't leave it in the car. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, it's it's a song. I, it's like a love song for Malaysia. Love song for it's Malaysia. It's like a love song for Malaysia. I wrote it. Um, I think yeah, three years ago. I just saw the YouTube link when I when I sent it to Sophia. <laughs> three years. It's been three years. Yes. Um, yeah, it's about it's a love song for okay. for Malaysia. It's called Malaysia Ku. Cool. Malaysia Ku. Malaysia Ku. Cool. Okay. And I got my friends to. Um, okay. I'm sorry guys, but today has to be the day that they probably are doing their check on their alarm system. So, okay. Yes. Yeah, so basically I think the mall does a little routine check. That might happen again and I'm so sorry if it does. Um, so yeah. Anyway. We will move on because um, you can actually watch the whole video again when we've edited it with the proper sound. Uh, I think you will hear me better then. Um, but moving from what Chelsea said, she wrote a song, a love song for Malaysia. And, and for the video I got, I got my friends to give me photos of what they think is very Malaysian. And I did a, a collage of it. A collage of all the things Malaysia. Okay, cool. <laughs> So that comes to my first question. Do you think we Malaysians are patriotic? Who, um, who wants to go first? We are very patriotic about our food, lah, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, cakap makan ni, ya, wah, super patriotic. Don't you dare take our nasi lemak. Because it's ours and we're proud of it and we love it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, think, I think we are patriotic when it, it's uh, eventful. And for the certain events, we're suddenly loving it, like you know, when doing it's trendy, well. And is it? when it's trendy, when Malaysia is doing well for like fo football or you know, uh, badminton, that suddenly, like, I love Malaysia. But the minute, like we were talking about it earlier, the minute we're going south, we're like, ah, no, no longer. Like this is not my country. Yeah. You know. So it's really it's it's patriotic in, in certain parts. Why do you why why do you think that happens? Why are we not like? 
loyally patriotic you know like like consistent lah not following the trend and how, how did that all start how did we all become quite well personally mm. i feel like it's been uh, because there's there's been some burn in history like you know there's been some letdowns uh, as a nation and i think that trauma and i think if you want to talk about trauma it's a it's a key thing when something bad happens that little trauma inside you it, it just reignites it, it comes it, tr it keeps on triggering because of uh, the, our slip ups and i think i don't know which point in our timeline that we were so traumatized as a nation or maybe it's a collective amount you know where there was a political or whether it's uh, to do with the co economy we have gone through th a lot of recessions and we I think it was a s I think it was a slow escalation yeah starting right. beginning in the 80s because uh, I remember stories I remember stories about what my my grandfather told me and my stories that my mother told me they they were pretty patriotic back then they were yeah. they were very appreciative they were very grateful um, I mean they, they didn't use those words but from their stories I could tell that that you know they were they were very together um, there weren't any outwardly um, you know race issues between oh. the community oh, yeah. and all that there you go yes yeah, so I've actually heard what she's trying to say because I was somewhere else when this came on. So it's like a, it's like a, they're checking the alarm. Oh. So like you know. So when so you said checking alarm, I'm like wow, you know yeah. so much about mall activities. I know so much about mall, mall only. You know you had that uh, the direction about parking, right? I was like fighting down. So I, was like, I have to go outside. Where outside? Like here. yeah. Okay, so back. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so let's go back to being patriotic. Yeah. So Chelsea says that it was probably, you know, escalating, why right? And and why, why? But when I look at it, I myself yeah. lost touch with being patriotic until much recently. Mm. I think, mm. you know. Same. I lost touch about, you know, I think when I was growing up in school, you know, all the songs and, and all that and, and the activities I did in school, I was very active in school, yeah. so we were always um, part of something that was nation building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly you just get detached. I don't know whether that's like age or studying or going to college and you're just being a teenager or a young adult and you want to explore everything. Mm -hmm. And then now that I have kids, I'm slowly feeling a little bit more that I want to be patriotic. Yeah. I want to teach my kids to be patriotic. Yeah. I want them to understand what patriotism means. Yeah. What, what do you believe patriotism means to you? Um, it means loyalty. Sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yes. Oh, the camera's here. Yeah. I forgot about the cameras. <laughs> It's susah nak cakap macam ni kan? Tak apa lah, tak apa boleh. Okay, boleh ya. Okay, um, I for me patriotism is my love for my home. Right. And no matter where I go, home will always be home. And and Malaysia is my home. Penang is my home. And yeah, so I think it's very important to have a sense of of belonging. Yeah. A sense of That's belonging, right. a strong sense of belonging. Patriotism. Yeah. yeah, it's a deep love for your country yeah. and yeah. and support. I think that's yeah. also the key word here. Like you are supporting your country, you're rooting for your country, and and it's pride, mm. and that's patriotism. Um, and I don't know whether I mean, I love Malaysia. I always love Malaysia. It's it's inspirational uh, for me as an artist. I have very good memories of growing up and friends and 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 coming together, but. It's not the same for everyone, I find. Mm. Everybody's like, yeah, I don't know why you like it so much. Some people who have decided to leave and some people who mm. are just not feeling like they're, they're feeling the country. However, like you said, Chelsea, in the, or you said as well, in the recent times, people are a little bit more aware of Malaysia again. Yeah. So the branding of Malaysia has come up again. So yeah. I think that's kind of true. But I think the branding of Malaysia came from the people. Yes, of course. Agre agreed. Yeah. When, the people, you know, yeah. when the people came together. When the people yeah. came together yeah. and we, when we realized that, you know, hey, we, we are together. Yeah. Yes. We're strong and we're together. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was explaining to Nini, like, you know, for me, being patriotic is beyond, you know, 
being beyond your race, religion, or even um, your political ideas. Yes. Because patriotism is not about you know who you vote for or who you are against. It really is like Chelsea said, the love for your home. You know how much we love our home and we want to embrace make, it and make, make it, better. it better. Yeah, exactly. I think you know to be patriotic is not about you like, Malaysia. You know, no. it's it's really how you want to contribute and make it better as well. And honestly, I think Chelsea said something really like that struck a chord to me. Uh, when people came together. Yes. I think people equals Malaysia. Yes. And, and I feel so proud when everybody starts coming together mm. um, and talking to each other and, and, and just uniting for an event. That's when I start feeling like, Whoa. and it's like really no, no race, no colour, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that spirit, I have not seen in another country. It's very unique. Yes. That you, that, yeah, and that and I think right. it's only, how can we retain that? you know, that spirit, because that spirit is very fragile. Mm. I, I feel like, you know, sometimes we always wait for someone else to nudge us yeah. for us to then be like, hey, hey, no, no, actually we're all gang, mm. you know? Where else it shouldn't, yeah. shouldn't be that way, you know? I think even like I was, we were talking about like singing Negaraku. Mm -hmm. You know how you have to sing Negaraku at certain official events mm -hmm. nowadays, you stand? Are you one that shrugs at it, or do you get up and like sing it proudly? Um, I, I actually I don't like it when people force something upon me. Okay. Yeah. So if I am there to watch a movie, and suddenly I'm supposed to stand up and I yeah. mean I I love Out Nagaku. It's such a beautiful ballad. Yeah. I, I love singing it, yeah. but when you force me to sing it. <laughs> And, and that could be from school yeah. Yeah. because we had to do that every day or, or at so certain like points. So it's like bad memories. Trauma. Like, you know, <laughs> trauma, trauma. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm like that too. Um, it's like occasional again mm. that I'm, I'm, I'm going to get up and go because maybe it's not the culture to Correct. sing a song before starting. Yeah, it's, it's and recently I've experienced that at like proper events and I'm going, why are we being like this hypocritical in a way? So, you know, and especially in the wake of things, you know, I, and I just felt I didn't need to do you that. Didn't feel, you, you, you're not able to feel it, right? Yeah. But at a sporting, at a, ah, at a, spo yeah, at a sporting <laughs> event or at, yeah, at sporting events, if you play the song when, when we go up and... That's about the, the only time that we would like to sing the song. Really? I don't know. I mean, like, you, you said that you... Oh, yeah, because, I mean, like, you know, previous years, maybe I would feel the same. Like, oh my God, I'm being put on the spot. Why do I have to do it? Yeah. I don't really feel it right now. But nowadays, it's like, as soon as, you know, I, it's kind of like I'm changing my mindset because I feel that what is, what is the best way of showing your love for your nation is yeah. singing your national anthem. I and mean... How did you do that? I, I really think it was just honestly just putting myself in the positions like why would I not? That's true. I, yeah. I, I feel that the the best way right now <laughs> to, to love our country is Jangan buang sampah merata rata tempat and keep the toilets clean. Yes. Keep the public toilets that we start from we start with that like, you know, to love to love what public spaces. Yes. To love the spaces that we share together, you know? And and even that if we can't even respect that, not only are we disrespecting ourselves, we are disrespecting the people around us. And, and that, that's like the basis of, yep. of loving where you come from, you know? If you love where you come from, you're not going to buang sampah merata rata tempat. You're not going to keep the toilets dirty because that's where you live, that's where you exactly. use. That's, yeah. that's, you know, you're not going to live with sampah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's know, how as, I feel. As I say, <laughs> Malaysia equals people. But the very people that also don't look after our con our, our things, you know, <laughs> it's ourselves. ourselves and our 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 other uh, where it doesn't concern mm. us. Yes, you know. And we, and we have think a it doesn't concern us. Yeah. So this idea of I'm taking care of staff. Um, should I talk over or? Okay. So the idea of like taking care of stuff so that somebody else can enjoy it. That yeah. idea is yeah. not in our our yeah. our mindset. Yeah. And I say, yeah. So like, okay, so how then do we educate the younger generation? Do you feel like the younger generation is a bit more patriotic? Or are they like totally lost touch? For my niece, I think, um, 
I think she's 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 starting to get it. I mean, yeah. after last year, after the the whole mm. hype of what happened, and she got really excited. She got really excited. She's got stickers all over her room. She's got um, little flags that she holds up. You know, so I feel in that respect, um, kids are starting to get a little bit more patriotic. For my niece and nephew, I think the thing that's kind of resonating with them right now is music and uh, the people that have made real impact outside of the country, uh, like Yuna yeah. and, and recently my nephew <laughs> discovered Joe Flizzle. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and, and... Discovered recently, yeah? Yeah, oh. discovered. And he, they've known him ever for so yeah. long. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so those things are like suddenly they're becoming a little bit more aware that Malaysia is actually cooler and that we can do things outside of the country mm. and that they don't need to go outside to be great. Yeah, Malaysia has a 16 year old who's going to study to be a surgeon. Exactly. 16 year old, sorry. Oh. Yeah. So the, yeah, so the, it's it's kind of going through that way, and because it's an urban setting, so you know, not, they're discovering it through YouTube, they're discovering it through their friends from school, um, so that's important too. I think for my kids, <laughs> they sort of felt I think the first feeling of being patriotic was when they watch Ola Bola. Oh. So when they watch Ola Bola, because the whole scenario was about you know the football team and and trying to work as hard to go, and you know prove to the nation that they could be in the Olympics and all that. Yeah. And my kids, I think, walked out understanding that, hey, I felt proud, you yeah. know, of, of the efforts, team. you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, that was our Malaysian team. Oh my God, my son was like, I didn't know you were so close to going to the Olympics, yeah, you know? Yeah. you know, and then, uh, So they understood the storyline, which then uh, led them to feel patriotism, although I think at that point they didn't quite understand that feeling, mm. you know, of that... Oh, that, that the word, yeah, yeah, the name of the they word that, the oh, feeling, that, the that feeling I have that I'm proud of the country, you know, mm. we did this or we got there. And I think as adults, we have a role to expose them. And I think we, are, we can also be at fault because if we don't talk kindly about the country, mm. then the younger kids are also going to see, well, if dad is going to feel that way, yeah. if auntie Nini is going to feel that way, then why should I feel like that, you yeah. know? So we are... It, it does affect yeah, to lead by example. you do and and expose the right things don't like go okay sing Nagaraku <laughs> I'm like slowly go do you know that Nagaraku is actually a French song you know kind of thing that they've created and, and they were like oh wow you know and then and even in language you know so do you know that you know we were called noble savages back in the day you know why were we noble and why were we savage and and people were and the idea of Pantun um, yeah what came from Malaysia essentially and, and all those things and it's not like I'm going to give them a lecture like I'm talking to my niece and nephew right now like 15 and 10 so I got to put it in slowly and 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 kind of infiltrate their psyche a little bit um, good idea to do it that way yeah and um, like for me I love talent in Malaysia and I think Malaysia's got a humongous amount of talent especially like animation so I'm telling my nephew who wants to be an animator, I said, do you know Boba Boy? Do you know, you know, uh, Agent Ali? And he sh because I'm, I'm forcing it so much on him, he's like not interested. But uh, okay. recently, he came back to me and said, look, I did a drawing on uh, Agent Ali. Bob, uh, and I was like, wow, you know? That, and that was like years later. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, when are you going to see like animation companies? And he's like, whatever, because I forced it onto them. Right. So they need okay. to discover Malaysia in their own way. Yeah. I, think, I think even like our parents, you know, like for me, even like my dad, yeah. he probably didn't realize how big our Malaysian animation was until yeah. he went away and realized that people were talking about it. And he's like, oh, I ha there is such a thing. Like, I haven't watched this, like, you know, because they're maybe not um, in tune with uh, with Malaysian creatures. Exactly. Yeah. So and and so we've been talking a lot about this, and it's really about being exposed. Mm. And like even your children was like, I didn't know that we nearly made yes, the Olympics. Yes. If, if I didn't force them to go and watch. Look, yeah. But, <laughs> so what kind of facts and what kind of information are we giving the young is also quite important. But as that's well. the thing. They learn sejarah, no? Yeah, do you remember learning sejarah? And I want to touch something. I got huge issues with that because I only remember 1313 Batu Besurat. <laughs> because for me, I only yeah, remember. remember I only remember that remember one. Ah, you see. <laughs> and the, have you been to the tree? And the tree. tree. <laughs> no, I've never been to the tree. I've never been to the tree, but I've, I've, yeah. yeah. I remember the tree and the image of the tree and him and that 
Was that a dog or a deer? Or no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A mouse deer, yes, was it? Yes, a mouse deer, <laughs> not a dog. <laughs> kind of looks like a dog. Right? Yeah. <laughs> if only we were um, uh, teaching people children people. that it's a story. Yeah. Right? I, I know, I know, because I mean, be I don't remember a lot about Sejara as well, but I remember more from talking to friends exactly. about our history. Yeah. yeah. And um, one thing about how the Sejarah subject is taught in schools also, it's not very interesting. La, yeah. sorry. It, it, so my kids also like, yeah. you know. That being said, I, 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 love, my, I love my Sejarah teacher. She's really nice. Yeah. I had one instant moment where a teacher made it into like a story for us. I said, do you know oh. that this happened? And I'm like, no, I didn't tell me more, you know? Uh, and actually having this linkages, like a lot of people don't know our history from way back. And it's only it's recently, no, it's like a few years ago, where I had to do a project about the spread of Islam in Malaysia. And I started learning about freaking Malacca and all that through that. And I drew out my own timeline and I'm like, wow, we, we've been so international yes. for so long. Yes. And why are we like still thinking like, more? I just realized how our Malaysian education system has not quite changed because I had to do the Sejarah project with my son for his Form 3. So, yes. So for, you did Sejarah. Yeah. I, I teach art uh. and I went through the syllabus. Number one, there's no art activity books for, Mal for, for no, people. No, art. It's always it's, just bring your pencil and pencil color and paint. Uh, and Anyaman is still there. I know, right? <laughs> Make did, Anyaman, Anyaman bookmark. Yeah. I did Anyaman also. And the sad thing is like when I'm teaching these Form 5 students and some of them te um, ask me to teach, uh, help them with their final paper and uh, they'll be like, what's Ukiran? Oh, okay. And it's in, the, it's in the paper, <laughs> but because art has been such a, a subject that's on the side, the teachers have not taught them the crafts. Yeah. And it's so hard for crafts. Oh, the history behind the craft. And why yeah. it's, um, it's that. When I traveled to Bhutan, one of the biggest things that uh, they were like, okay, welcome to Bhutan. Do you know we have 13 arts? So it's Bhutan 13 arts of weaving, crafting, blah, blah, blah. It's the That's same thing, same right? Thing. And, and it's so nice. beautiful, right? And you take away that. Malaysia too, we've yeah. got 14 crafts, yep. more than that. Oh. So yeah, um, and 40, I'm yeah? 14. 14. I mean, 14 states. I mean, that's yeah. only in the Anyaman yes. portion, but so many. Um, but you know, that type of thing would be great for people to be more aware of. So I think, you know, just maybe likening or like linking what's trending right now to what we are really good at. And people would probably like say, hey, we're not too bad too. Yeah. yeah. Calling all YouTubers out there. Start it. Start it. <laughs> because you know why? Kids watch YouTube more than anything. Like yeah. we probably, like, I grew up watching TV most of the time, yeah. but kids today watch YouTube religiously you know mm -hmm. so maybe we have to call out to the youtubers mm -hmm. Malaysian youtubers time to you know make some waves and get some Malaysia you know right. themes going on that's that's key. right yeah we, had, because we have to trick them to do it though <laughs> <laughs> for, for, for now okay how do you celebrate Merdeka oh. what do you do I remember how I did it when I was a kid but you know I'm terrible at it now it's kind of just a public holiday, but yeah, how do you do it, Merdeka? Well, do you have a special thing you do? I, well, I love watching the fireworks. Okay, but that's the night before, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the night before, yes. It's a holiday, so spend time with family. Oh, okay. Yeah, and um, this year, I'll be doing the Pumpon Show. Ah, yes. Shameless plug. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I've been wanting to go and see that. I must. Yes, Try yes, it's called, it's called the Pumpon Show. It's a variety show made by women, written by women, performed by women. And, um, it's supposed to be funny, right? The, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, it's a comedy show with comedy skits, stand-up comedy, um, uh, there you go. That's song and one dance. Way to celebrate Malaysia. Yeah, celebrate that's one Malaysian way. Celebrate Malaysian talent. <laughs> celebrate Malaysian yeah. talent. And, and Malaysian women talent somewhere. Yes, we have Tria Aziz, myself, uh, Shamain Othman, yes. and Joanne Kam. Yes. Nice. So it, it's going to be fun. It's at Kenti TDI. Okay. It's at Kenti TDI and we're giving away two tickets. I was supposed to tell you earlier, but I totally forgot. Oh, okay. So um, supposed to tell me, but never mind. You can tell me now. <laughs> two, two tickets for your, for your uh, viewers. Oh, okay. Two premium tickets for your viewers. Guys, yes. please. So how, how are you going to yes. make them win it? <laughs> I don't know. But we'll think about it. So you have to tune in or catch 
uh, tune in to our live later on if you got no time to watch the whole thing or uh, scroll our Facebook page or I haven't decided how we're going to do it last, so yeah. <laughs> but yes, two, yeah. two premium tickets to watch the Pumpuan Show on the 31st of August yeah. to celebrate. Yes, two tickets there. Very cool. How do you celebrate, Merdeka? Um, in the past, like maybe three years or four, three years, I've worked with a group of creative people and we've done creative projects. Um, so Nikki Chong, you know, um, so he has invited me to, to, he has in the past, uh, do exhibitions or like certain campaigns. So I, the last time I did Baba Nyonya Tiles, for instance. So I went around Malaysia and Kuala Lumpur and started taking photographs of flowers and turned them into tiles. Um, so it really is a great moment for, for me to sort of give back and, and do a creative project where people reflect on the country. Another one we did an exhibition was an interactive one where you could together make an installation. Oh, okay. So I tried to do something uh, every Mer Merdeka and this is one of it for this year like to do something that makes you reflect on the country and appreciate it more so I think that's kind of like what I do well I'm so glad that I can be part of your celebration yeah, my activity. I remember as a kid always waking up to watch the parade oh my god I was in the parade you oh, wow. <laughs> were you like one of the yeah, in the, you what know the, you the in little the parliament? Do you yes. That? Oh, yes, yes. Were I you a kid in the little parliament? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was always so envious of those kids. I know, I was it and I, was, I got chosen. That, so who were you Do in you the remember this? I was just or are you like much girls. younger than us? I, I don't, I don't. Yes. Okay, yes. So I'm not much younger than you guys. I don't think I'm even younger than you guys, but... Yes, you probably are. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, so it was back in the day and then I remember, I it was a core memory because I remember getting up and putting pigtails and, my, and they did it wrong for me. <laughs> Do they still have that today? No, they they do, don't, right? Yeah. Please bring back Little Parliament because that was really, really good. I was, I was just one of the, the Parliament members. Basically, they you know, set up yeah. like a mini Parliament yeah, and they have like, little little kids as the mentries. Yeah, and I remember I had a cold and I didn't know where to put my snot, so I went on, a like that. Oh. on TV. My mother was like, Psh, face to face. Yes, yeah. so those of you who remember yeah. Little Parliament, yeah. uh, I, I used to do that. I would wake up, watch the parade, watch the Little Parliament. Yeah. You Always would probably have seen Nini. I probably have. Maybe. Wiping her snot on the I know, seat. probably. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I used to be so like, oh my God, how do you be one of these kids, you know? It seemed like such an important thing to do. Yeah, and I do love the parade. Yeah. I have to say, the, and the parade is getting bigger and bigger. I, and but when was the last time you went or watched the I parade? didn't, I watched it on TV, so now. But I didn't physically go, but I do like, my mother used to judge it, the uniforms. Oh, okay. Um, so I was quite aware of the parade, but I never physically went there because it was long. I went mean, one time with yeah. mum, but after that it's television. I've never actually been to the parade. Have you ever been to the parade? No, it's like, very fun. It's very panas and, and it's a lot of the parade people there. Do you know in Europe, Ken, they always say it is not, uh, what? I don't know how do you say this saying, but something about it's don't let the weather like change your your activity or lifestyle. Oh, really? Um, it's, it's really how you or what you wear. Mm. You know, you just change what you wear. So if it's raining and you want to go for a walk, wear a raincoat and just go. In Europe, it's like that. Bring a fan. Yeah. Bring a fan. Yeah. With a spritzer. Mm. With ice inside. <laughs> so, so, you know, I, I mean like, even watching it, I, I don't think I've actually made yeah, yeah, the effort to watch it with my kids, which is last time it was like a family a thing, thing, you know? Right? It was a thing. You wake up in the morning, you have your breakfast, you sit down, you watch the parade. For me, it's a content issue. Check it out. Wow. <laughs> now I can say it's a content issue because they're not. Boring, eh? It's it's boring. Um, it's so dry. Um, you, you the the talk sh the the talking heads are just uh, here we are and so and so is going. There's no additional thing. Um, I think it can be a more entertaining. But I think right now, like even like our, our national TV is getting very interactive and things like that. They have all the screens and yeah. stuff. Yeah, but yeah. sometimes they fall back to natural, uh, to natural ways of presentation, right. which sometimes. And I, I, I would love that they can do the stats, but you have to do it in an in engaging manner and not just have it there for the sake of it, you know. So I think that has to be innovated. Mm. There you go, Nini. Yeah. <laughs> going to 
content. Yeah. Yes. Do you think that what we see in the mass media, yeah. TV, yeah. our terrestrial television, yeah. and also um, our cable TV networks, yes. do you think they are also very responsible for segregating and not bringing us together? Mm. Because back in the back in the day, we yeah. had Pima Pima Tangtu. Everyone watched Pima Pima Tangtu. Yes, yes, yes. We had Kopitiam. Eh, shameless plug again. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but okay, I can't speak for the uh, for the gov uh, RTM, uh, which is government uh, yeah. based, but because they have to do all of that. Oh, actually, they do. Their I content think. is pretty good, actually. Yes, yes, um, yes. You're correct. The rest are running a business in the end, oh. so it really is about demand. Um, they have tried, and I know this, mm. like some channels have tried to put in more urban content, more English-speaking content, documentaries. Why do you, why do you think that's so? Why do I th like, why is drama so important now? What, then you have to go back to the psyche of mass malaise. Why is love so important? And mm. why is it that they have to have this be saved by men kind of syndrome? Yes. And that is the line that everybody... Even Disney is walking away from being saved by Prince Charming, okay? Do you, think, do you think it's the education system then? I don't know, but then when I was reflecting a lot about that, every mass market society has that. The Latin Americans have yeah. the same telenovela stuff. The, the, you know, China has also yep. their dramas that talk about those issues. So it's not a Malaysian thing, because mm -hmm. I used to want to blame that. But then I thought, wow, it could be a society as a whole thing. Yeah. And so where does it go? I went deep into that as well in a way in terms of reflection. Um, slavery and all that, those are all themes that have impacted our psyche as a nation. You know, um, for us, we have this attitude where if you are somebody, we follow kind of thing. And that is a dogmatism that has happened, that has been attracted back to a long time ago, you know, with the kings and queens kind of yeah. thing. So that psyche cannot be broken. It's like a hundred, it's thousands of years worth of that type of like, I'm going to follow you because you're like great kind of thing. No, I believe people can change their mindset. Exactly. True. I believe. But it's I a collective effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it's changing How do we start? the mindset collective. And again, it doesn't help that networks are feeding the demand. Exactly. And not trying to change and, and feed yeah. them with, this is what you could have. Yeah. You but know? it's so volatile. It's I see it from the back end as well. If they do it, they take it's a hit financially. It's a chicken and egg thing. Yeah. If you don't introduce new things yeah. slowly, yeah. It, 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 it's, it could be sort of an art form yeah. that, that we've not perfected yet. Yeah. And, but I, I think it's very, very important because yeah. movies, when we go see, watch movies, when we watch TV, it, yeah. it's what inspires us, yeah. you know? And if these things are what they consume, yeah then they're never gonna progress. They're yeah. never gonna progress. We're never gonna yeah. progress because I mean, we should stop saying they yeah. because it's, yeah. it's, it's us. us. We, are, <laughs> we, we will we never are. progress. Yes. We will never progress because we, we can't just leave people behind, yeah. you know? So I used to distribute movies and I used to have like a, a combination of independent movies as well as the, the mass movie, right? <clears throat> and at one point I was wedged in between a horror movie and a horror comedy, not without naming some, okay? And it was really hard because a lot of them would say, it's art barat. The stuff that we like oh, is barat. barat. I don't want to do it. Tapi tak barat langsung, you know? It's, I don't want to go through it. So their mindset is, I'm going to pay 20 ringgit, right? And I'm going to go watch a movie. Yeah. I want to watch it with my family, one, because that's their thing for the weekend. And I want to have a good laugh. Mm. I don't really want to reflect. So there is a huge disparity in, in psyche in terms of mass and the thinking people and what we enjoy as entertainment. And I think we shouldn't like um, deviate and say that we're all one and the same and we're not. Mm. Um, because we are multicultural, therefore we also multi-thinking people as mm. well and different levels and depends on what kind of um, education you are. I was lucky, I had a, bunch, I had a mix from government, semi-public semi, uh, semi, uh, semi to public to, to boarding. So I could see the whole spectrum. And to be honest, I loved Malaysia when I was outside. 
then I started mm. to appreciate Malaysia so much. And I thought, I miss the food. Yeah. yeah, I miss nasi <laughs> namak 150 and now 250. But I, I miss... Go, 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 still God, it. The low is like freaking small, la, right? Half. Eh. Sorry, not 150. <laughs> but you see how excited we were about food? <laughs> That's why I teach you how food. Don't you take our nasi lemak away. I don't you dare. <laughs> so maybe, how do we, you know, I mean, how do we incorporate more Malaysian food into dramas and things like that yeah. so that we can be proud of the... And I think that's happening. Yeah. Um, when I'm out, right, so, so now as an artist, uh, artisanal things are becoming very... Yeah. Like everyone wants it. They don't yeah. want the cookie cutter Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone thing. wants some sort of like... And I'm, yeah. Bespoke. Yeah. Is that the word? Yeah, bespoke, bespoke or like made by hand. Yeah. So, um, and I'm finding that the retail people are, are really just pushing it a lot. And I think that needs to happen. Like everybody, need, everybody needs to have their own pop up. Yeah. And then collectively, maybe those pop ups can become a big one in the future. But I think it starts from there. Like everybody should have a little bit of rojak next to nasi lemak kind of but thing. I mean, like, okay, I want to say this, right? Yeah. I want to be really supportive of local products, local, whether it's local uh, makeup or local clothing or local whatever it may be, lah. Mm. But why sometimes so mahal? Mm. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so glad that you brought that up. I want to I wanna understand. I mean, yes, okay. I would definitely support. Yeah. But if I want to continuously support, yeah. sometimes if it's going to cost like 20 bucks every month and I can buy it for 5 bucks yeah. for an uh, XYZ brand, yeah. I might just go for the XYZ brand because, you know, that's within my 5 ringgit budget and not spend the 20 bucks every month. Same thing about eating healthy. Ah, uh, yeah, same, same, same issue. It's food. down to manufacturing and it's down to who can give it for the cheaper cost price, right? Artisanal stuff, made by hand stuff, your quantities are so low that you have to work. Um, and, and so the manufacturers, if you are working with a the factory, they'll charge you a premium. For me especially, and I do like a hundred pouches, and I'm trying to work with mothers, I'm trying to ask the Rohingyans to make yeah. me tassel, scarlet, and I'm, I'm buying them at like very high prices because I want to support it, and my cost becomes high. Yeah. And if I don't charge it, then I won't be able to retain this. And then, and then you go down in this deep spiral of, oh yeah. my God, let's just do it, get some stuff made in China. Yeah. Um, so lo local products will be expensive, until everybody, until the demand gets bigger, then the local factories then stop. Believing. So, so I guess what Nini is trying to tell us is yeah. support to? and buy local, so that if we, the more of us buy, then they can get cheaper. Then more people can also support. You know, like that, yeah. right? All manufacturing costs can go lower, <laughs> lah. Ah, know. oh, hello, people out there who is manufacturing. Manufacturing. Yeah, <laughs> please, please, lah. Uh, try to think volume. Maybe they can come. No, because I mean, I really would like to support local, yeah. you know, yeah. but sometimes if you go to, you know, the one that starts with the D, right? Yeah. So cheap everything inside there, less than five ringgit sometimes. So yeah. you just buy lah. <laughs> so, exactly. So I mean, the yeah. Was, oh, oh, took me a few seconds. Yeah. I thought, what was D? Me too. I, was like, oh, I know lah, that one everywhere I also got now. <laughs> so anyway, I've been, I've been signaled that almost time's up or time's almost up or I've overrun the time, which, but um, let's just sum it up one last time. What would you like to say about Malaysia and celebrating Malaysia, Nini? I think Malaysia is beautiful. And I think what we need to celebrate is the, the, this colorful um, Malaysia, you know? Um, for me, again, as an artist, I look at the trees. I can go to the waterfall like 20 minutes from the city, not even an issue, if I want it on a weekday. And we have amazing waterfalls out there. And I think we need to love that aspect of Malaysia and how unique that is, and it's not, not, not always that you can get. That's how I start loving Malaysia. The beauty and Malaysia is beautiful, and it's inspirational for me. Yep. I always reflect on that. Agree. Chelsea? <laughs> What was the question again? No, I'm kidding. You <laughs> forget. Um, uh, I love Malaysia because Malaysia is my home. And it will always be my home. And therefore, I will always love Malaysia, no matter what. Rain or shine, 
like in the song that I wrote. Rain or shine, I love you, Malaysia. Okay, for me, I mean, I come from a totally Malaysian background, like my mom's Chinese, my dad's Malay, mixed with Arab, and you know, we're brought up speaking English most of the time. Uh, grew up watching Cantonese drama with my mom, uh, eating roti canai for breakfast. So I think uh, Malaysia is truly so unique that why you say like we we love it more when we go away because that uniqueness you can't find anywhere else in the world i love how we i have friends who are malay chinese indian you know serani or or you know sabah sarawak or all those i have friends from any type of race and we can sit down i, I think one thing i love that you know maybe on the outside some people will think that we're all just a bit um, crude yeah. but we can actually poke fun at each other you know when we're with each other yeah. and not feel offended actually yeah, we're yeah. okay yeah. because I know it's beyond yeah. it's beyond that you know for us yeah. the friendship matters most mm -hmm. and we can be together and yet not feel offended mm -hmm. I, I love that about my friends mm -hmm. and we're all multiracial yeah. and we all pick on each other we all sometimes come up with all the stereotype jokes yeah. but nobody walks away with like Marajo or, or you know and that's one thing I love about about being Malaysian I mean if you're truly Malaysian I know you do that at home okay <laughs> I know yes. but you know don't be offended on the outside then when yeah. at home you are okay with all these things yeah. and then when you go out or when you're like keyboard warrior and all that and you want to get so offended yeah. chill la. chill la. Chill la. Chill we we are just Malaysians and we are like that we need to accept each other the way we are <laughs> we pick on each other all the time okay <laughs> we pick on each other all the time um, but at the end of the day love for Malaysia is the most so I think we can get over any disagreements because I think you know I think we can all agree we love Malaysia yeah in whatever Can. capacity. I yeah. think you at home also, you love Malaysia. Yeah. If you really stress, tutup je social media tu. No need to look at it because why? If that messes with your love for Malaysia, it's social not worth your time. Social media yeah. is a spreader of hate. <laughs> yeah. Or a spreader of love as well. So Sometimes, just convert yeah. the conversation. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> thank you, Chelsea, for joining me. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Nini, thank for joining you. me. Thank Happy Merdeka, guys. Happy See you at the Malaysia. next, next hangout. <laughs> Um, whenever that may be. But bye. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Dome. Bye.